You're watching UPN 57, WPSG in Persia. Approaches. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in for Weather Center. I'm Jeff Morrow. There are actually three hurricanes and a new tropical storm churning in the Atlantic, but George is the only one that is a direct threat to any land area tonight. It's a minimal hurricane right now, but the slightest variation in its path, and that could change. We're going to switch now to the forecast center. Dave Schwartz now has the latest on George. Jeff, you hit the nail on the head. The slightest variation in the forecast track will cause this to change, not only who gets hit, of course, by the direction of the hurricane, but how strong the hurricane is. And we'll get into that here in just a minute. I want you to show, a very, I show you a very active tropical Atlantic right now. Here is Hurricane George as it heads toward the west, but there is another hurricane, that's Gene. This is Hurricane Ivan, as that heads northward out of the way, and a new tropical storm is headed eastward. So there are three hurricanes in here, but this one is the one that is of greatest concern. Now, it has moved over Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, and now over its third large island, the island of Cuba. And for that reason, this is no longer a Category 4 storm hurricane as it was this past weekend. It is now packing maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour, but it's still a hurricane. So hurricane warnings are in effect for parts of Cuba. For Haiti, these will probably be dropped later on tonight. And for central and southern, the Bahamas. Now it's getting serious for us in the United States. Hurricane watches are in effect for southern Florida, from Bonita Beach to Naples, through the Keys, up to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Pompano Beach, and Deerfield Beach. Well, in an effort to keep you one step ahead of the storm, we have dispatched a team from the Weather Channel to Key Biscayne, headed by Jim Cantor. You've seen him cover these hurricanes before. Jim is there. Jim, what have you seen today? Well, Dave, uh, again, what we've seen today is just an over willingness for people to get out and make the preparation they need to make because I think a lot of folks are very, very reminded of Andrew and no doubt they didn't want to get caught off guard. So, in all honesty, if this thing, George, were to prepare itself and come in as a Category 4, the people here would be prepared for it. The mandatory evacuations that we have are for the Keys only, and those have gone out, as Billy Wagner has told us on a couple of occasions, without a hitch. So very, very well indeed. No evacuations yet in Dayton, Broward counties, but if they do issue them here in Key Biscayne, this island has got to be evacuated. Once hurricane warnings go up, that means we're out of here. So that's, uh, that's the rule here. Shelters, uh, if they in fact are going to open, they will open four hours after evacuations are issued for Dayton, Broward counties. I want to take our storm cam here so you can see what kind of a night we're dealing with as we look from the Rusty Pelican, which is where we've been here in Key Biscayne, across uh, to the southwest at a beautiful skyline of downtown Miami. And what you don't see there, folks, is the hustle and the bustle that's going on as folks conclude their preparations on what was, no doubt, Dave, a very busy day as people prepare for George, no matter what it may do. Back to you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we're glad you're on the scene, and you'll be back with us tomorrow once the sun comes up. And it will come up tomorrow, but tomorrow night conditions may worsen. That's good to hear, Dave. Thank you. Sure. Um, and speaking of the sun tomorrow, when you wake up tomorrow in Miami or Fort Lauderdale or elsewhere in South Florida and you do see the sun, don't be fooled into thinking that the hurricane is not going to impact you. It's just that it hasn't gotten there, or at least the effects have not gotten there. What effects will we have? Still a big question mark. We turn to the Weather Channel Meteorology Supervisor, Stu Ostro. Stu, what do you think we're in for in South Florida? Well, let's say just as an example, the hurricane were to be exactly as it is now when it makes its closest approach to South Florida. We would have winds of 75 miles per hour with some higher gusts, nothing to sneeze at, uh, locally heavy rain, and the soil in South Florida is already saturated from recent heavy rains, which could cause, cause flooding, the potential for isolated tornadoes, and of course some storm surge. If the hurricane is more intense or less intense, you can just vary that accordingly in terms of the wind and the storm surge. And right now, it's a little too early to tell which direction on either side of that intensity level it will be. But regardless, precautions have to be taken. And we're glad that uh, the emergency management folks have stayed ahead of the curve. Billy Wagner and all those folks have done a great job. And given the evacuation challenge in the Keys in South Florida, that's what needs to be done. OK, this is a, this is a Category 1 hurricane, 75 miles per hour, and nothing to sneeze at, as you mentioned before. But what needs to happen? What would happen 
for this to become really ugly? Well, the worst case scenario would be that the center of circulation comes offshore relatively uh, soon here, even in the next few hours, takes a track over water and a little closer, making a beeline right for South Florida. Uh, the best case scenario would be that it would stay over land, the center of circulation would stay over land, and I don't say best case scenario wanting bad effects in Cuba, actually that would be good for them too because the center of circulation would not intensify. So we're just going to have to watch this very closely. We're also going to have to watch it if it stays on uh, or even close to the projected path on into the Gulf of Mexico for potential intensification down the line there too. Now speaking of proje projected path, this hurricane has uh, made its way across the Atlantic Ocean basically going west. Now there's a chance, as you say, that it would come off of land and head toward the northwest. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, there may eventually be somewhat of a turn more toward the northwest. We don't think it's going to be very sharp, and we uh, certainly don't think there's any chance of it suddenly curving this way. Uh, there is that margin of error, but in general, we're uh, pretty confident that it's going to come close enough to South Florida to produce effects. The only question is how significant will those effects be, and again, we want people to uh, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Now, if this goes around the west coast, Stu, that means that in Fort Myers and Tampa, and who knows where else we could have hurricane force winds, and it would, would have been over a lot more warm water at that point. So there really is lots to consider here. Yes, yes, definitely. And anybody either on the Gulf Coast or potentially heading to the Gulf Coast for the weekend needs to stay tuned for the very latest on this. Good point. Meteorology Supervisor Stu Ostro, you're the man. We appreciate all the uh, information that you give us. And we appreciate you for checking with us here at the Weather Channel for the latest on Hurricane George. We are keeping a 24-hour vigil. We're here we're at whenever you need us. And, of course, at our online service at weather.com. Well, Jeff Morrow is standing by in the studio with a look at the rest of the country's weather. And in some places, well, it's kind of a fall feel tonight. Isn't that right, Jeff? That's exactly right, Dave. It's a very pleasant evening across much of the Northeast. A little bit coolish, perhaps, and there are some frost and freeze advisories out, some of the first of the season, and we'll look at those in a moment. Uh, but the rest of the East not looking too bad either. Cold front has pushed very far to the south, but uh, that's not going to linger too long because fast on the heels of this big dome of high pressure where you see the absence of clouds, you have a little band of showers and not too much in the way of any thunder and lightning, but we do have some showers moving through places like the Twin Cities and on down toward the Des Moines, Iowa area, Mason City, and crossing over into Wisconsin now. There's our big high. There's the front, and it has pretty much ended up stalled out here across the south. Of course, Stu and Dave were talking about Georges and where it may be headed, and some leftover showers in the Rockies. A lot of that action pretty much starting to die down. The order for $14.95 for one or $19.95 for two plus $5.95 shipping to GS27, 1000 Apex Street, Department GS, Nashville, Tennessee. Ship your package in two days with FedEx. You run into seven different price zones. Ship your package in two days with UPS. And you'll run into seven different price zones. Ship your package in two to three days with priority mail. And there's just one price zone. So, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station. Don't be unprepared for Hurricane George. Stay with the Weather Channel. We'll have up-to-the-minute details on this dangerous storm on Weather Center every hour and half hour. Over the next several months, you might see our service crews in your neighborhood. The work they'll be doing will improve the reliability and overall performance of your cable service and enable us to offer you advanced communications options in the near future. As this work is being done, you may experience temporary interruptions. We will do our best to keep this inconvenience to a minimum. And later this year, look for our brand new channel lineup. Thank you for choosing Comcast. Everything you connect with. Diet. I've tried everything. Then I tried Herbal PF and lost 52 pounds. It helped me control my hunger and my weight. My patients report that Herbal PF helps control their appetite, reduce cravings, and create a feeling of fullness. Many were able to lose weight successfully. And now you can order a 60-tablet supply of Herbal PF for only $19.95. If you call now, we'll include a $5 gift certificate for future purchases. Call 1-800-257-5700 now. I think that people have a fascination with the weather, just like we do. And
and they want to get our insight into why the weather is doing what it's doing. We even show pictures. Right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. Time now for Storm Watch and your tropical update, and we'll start there first with a look in the tropics. Let's get right to it and start you out in the <laughs> into the Atlantic Basin. And we'll find lots of little swirls out there, and every one of those swirls representing a tropical storm or a hurricane at this point. Uh, this, of course, is George. Uh, we've got uh, Ivan out here, which is a hurricane, Jean, which is a hurricane, and a brand new tropical storm as we work our way closer to Bermuda. First things first, let's go ahead and look at the latest on Hurricane George as of 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. If you've been plotting at home, those are the latest coordinates. 20.6 uh, north, 75.7 west, 460 miles southeast of Miami, Florida. A minimal hurricane now with 75 mile per hour winds, but there are some indications looking at the satellite picture that we may be seeing that center of circulation developing a little closer to the coast of Cuba. If that gets out over warm open water, we could see this intensify. It's a possibility. It's moving to the west northwest to 12, estimated central pressure 992 millibars. Here's a look at the hurricane watches and warnings. And a reminder that hurricane watch simply means that hurricane conditions are possible within the next 36 hours. A hurricane warning means that. Uh, uh, hurricane conditions are possible in the next 24 hours or less and obviously they are feeling those effects right now heading into eastern sections of Cuba. There's a look at the satellite picture and I talked about the possibility of maybe the center of circulation kind of reorienting itself here a little bit further north which might put it a little bit more over the warm open water so this will bear some watching as we head into the overnight to see whether or not uh, this is going to strengthen it all. There's the strike probability Again, this is a possibility, but it does kind of show you in the red where uh, at this point in time the highest probability of it striking landfall might be. And the general gist you should get out of this is if you're watching from especially South Florida, but really anywhere across Florida, you need to be keeping an eye on this as we go into the overnight and certainly into Thursday, Friday, and quite possibly even on into Saturday. It's possible that this could miss the southern coast of Florida and maybe have more of an impact on the Keys. That's a possibility, but it does look like it will come close enough to have some impact. It's hard to say what that impact might be because of the strength we don't know exactly what the strength will be or how close it might come to South Florida. So it certainly bears some watching. This is our brand new tropical storm. This is Carl. It's moving away from Bermuda. So in other words, it's only a threat to uh, ships out there in the Atlantic. We have uh, Hurricane Ivan. And Ivan, if anything, is going to recurve perhaps and maybe produce more of a threat eventually to uh, Africa, maybe bringing a little more rain there. And then finally, there's Jean, which is moving to the west, northwest at 16. And so far, are, uh, is not a threat to any land masses, especially if it continues out on that track. As we go closer to the lower 48, we have really a pretty quiet scenario. And in fact, some of the biggest news in the lower 48 might be some of the rain in the upper Midwest and much cooler air, maybe even some frost heading into parts of the Northeast. Weather Center is coming. Hurricane watches have been posted for South Florida and residents have wasted no time in getting ready for George. Updates plus the national forecast coming up on Weather Center. For 97 years.